And we're back with Chronicle of the Crown, session 10. And we're going to jump straight into it. So we left off last time with our heroes having a spot of uh, trouble with their travels across the wild lands. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, foraging that we have been able to do, not a lot of food. Uh, we've been making sort of good headway, but we've been slowed down by having to forage more because there's less to eat. And uh, we have arrived at a, a, a particular old elven forest, which Tyrell has recognized as having the sort of golden ash trees that uh, some elves rather enjoy. Uh, so it is more than likely a forest planted by the elves some long eons ago. Uh, however, these trees are old and withered. Uh, they they seem to be on on the uh, uh, fading. And there are some ruins that we came upon, uh, including the sort of central piece of this raised stone platform, which in it has this uh, pool uh, for water, which does have water in it, but also has bits of debris and, uh, well, from, you know, the surrounding nature as and always animals as well. So there's detritus in the pool. The water is dank and um, it is winter. So it is partially frozen. Uh, it is not the deep winter yet, but we will get there. And Terrell has recognized that this is the kind of pool that the... Uh, more powerful elven lords of the ages have used for their far-seeing abilities. We also came upon, well, noticed rather, in this sort of area that there is a camp of some kind of crew of excavators, it appears. They have a dig, uh, a couple, in fact, set up with tarps over them so the snow doesn't you know, come in and, and uh, swamp it. Uh, they are excavating something in the grounds here at this site in the forest. Um, there's a couple dozen thereabouts, hard to tell really. Uh, we ended up here, I think it was in the early evening. So they were just sort of wrapping up as they're losing light. So they're setting up their campfire, putting the food on and that sort of thing. Uh, there are both humans and dwarves as a part of this uh, this crew here as they are wrapping up their activities for the day. And I will mention as we sur survey these excavators here that uh, Glarvir has noted that these, these ones, the dwarves, uh, they have rather short beards or even just full on like no actual beard and maybe like mutton chops on the side, or maybe just a big mustache, uh, a fair bit more uh, of the old cutting than you're used to seeing in uh, Maul Brannan. Right, uh, that's where, where we'll pick up. So you, you have seen these people at work. They haven't spotted you yet. It's over to you guys. Well, well I, I'll resolve that as loudly in Dwarven. I say, hello there. There's a there's a couple who like dart for like a <laughs> like the nearest hand axe or a shovel. Uh, turn around, um, they spot you and sort of because you're not immediately shooting arrows at them like they sort of expected. Uh, like putting weapons away a bit, still holding on to a shovel. It's like one of them, uh, a human, yells out it's like, "Hello, how can we help you?" So sort of like continuing to walk forward, sort of hands held mm -hmm. open, so they can see I've mm -hmm. not got any weapons or whatever. I'm going to walk forward. And I'll say, uh, "We are just uh, switching to like common for the benefit of the humans." Mm -hmm. 
Hello there. We are uh, we are simple travellers passing through. Uh, we hope to join the, the reclamation efforts at Kazkarad. Uh, we are on our way there, and we we spotted you, so we thought we'd come and say hello, and um, if you don't mind, see what you're up to. Uh, there's there's one of the doors, like does a little bit of mental math clearly, and it's like Kazkarad. That's that's a fair bit. You have to go still. Oh, it's, a, it's, a that, long, like. it's a long journey, a long journey. Yeah, we, we up the mountain too. I'm assuming they've got like a campfire or something similar. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. They do. I'm going to say, we were, we were wondering if uh, we might stop off and uh, share the warmth of your fire for, for the evening. As you say, we have a we have a long, long distance travel and the journey to Kazkarad is perilous. We, we were quite surprised to find... Uh, Kith and Kin here, a pleasant surprise, I'll warrant you, but a surprise nonetheless. Uh, yeah, the, the dwarf says, uh, well, well, we'll see about that. Yeah, I uh, looks around, some of them whisper a little bit there, and it's like, I was supposed you can stay for the fire, uh, don't steal anything, and this whole thing is taken, by the way, so no, no putting pick to the ground. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, we appreciate your hospitality. I am, I'm Glavir, and uh, these are my companions: uh, Tyrell of the Woodland Kin, and uh, Cameron Redwin. Ah, right. Okay then. Um, as we set about, and they sort of have a, I think they've hunted a deer. Um, They've got this thing on the spit roast there. Um, <laughs> the dwarf takes out a carving knife and you know starts working on the on the spit. And uh, is, so while I work on this dinner here, why don't you all regale us with the tales of how is it that a woodsman, whatever you are, points at Cameron and uh, and a mountain kin. Uh, happen to be here of all that's places. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'll I'll sit myself down and I'll basically break out like on a log or some shit, mm -hmm. and I'll basically like break out like the last of my dwarven ale, mm -hmm. you oh, know, okay. to show that like oh we're we're like sharing it around a bit. We're we're bringing a little bit of something something to the wait. You're you're breaking out the nog. Yeah, yeah. But busting, okay, yeah, the, uh, busting it the, out. The, the dwarves the dwarves will know what it is. Yeah, yeah. The dwarves do know, which is why I, I wanted to make sure because I was like. Do you still have some other ale? You must not. So, when you when you take out the nog, the every dwarf basically is like there's the there's the part where the pianist like leans hard on the piano, <laughs> and every dwarf just turns. I'll be like going around shaking hands with people, you know, like passing the yeah passing the rest of it around that sort of shit. Yeah, it's like every, everyone sort of starts hovering over. And it's like is that is that nog? Is that nog? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> so, uh, uh, please forgive me if I'm a little bit forward. We. We are a little bit famished. I'd be more than willing to, to share what I have if we could perhaps partake of a, a few of your victuals. Yeah, yeah, there's there's deer in the forest, but there's there's not, you know, trees full of nog. Well, yes, uh, and wh whilst, I, uh, whilst I have a fair bit of knowledge in the, uh, the brewing arts, uh, it's fair to say, uh, unfortunately, with our travels, uh, <laughs> the, the equipment needed to make such a vintage is few and far between as i'm sure you can imagine uh, but but, mm. but but please uh what what little i have remaining you, you are welcome to share although uh and I, i'll switch to sort of dwarven i don't know if the humans understand dwarven i don't care i'll mm -hmm. switch to dwarven as i'm talking <laughs> to the dwarves and i'll be like although um i, I might suggest we uh we water it down a little if uh no disrespect but if um n non dwarves are going to partake of it uh, I, I, i'm sure i don't have to tell you of the the potent effect this this knock can have on uh, those who yeah. aren't accustomed to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. As as you um, as you talk, uh, the sort of the the dwarf that you've been talking to most, who also introduces himself as uh, uh, Tharalan. I'll put that in the chat. Um, <clears throat> he sort of like motions for uh like taps a couple of his dwarven friends here on the shoulder like pushes them away is like go 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 give the you know the, the tall boys uh, a couple trinkets from the pile you know 
because they're not having any of this. And then turns turns back to you. Like, oh, no, 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 no. We we don't need. To, we don't. We, we we don't. We were not gonna. We're not gonna put snow in this. Uh, old oh, old. <laughs> what what would they call you? Old. Um, Greybeard. Yeah, I guess yeah. Greybeard. Yeah, we're we're not we're not putting snow in this brew. Greybeard. Well, no, I, I. I'll be honest. I don't like to do so myself, but on occasions where it's all I've had to offer to share with people who give me hospitality. I have had to do so because it, it would be poor form on my behalf to uh, so disable a, a person who had offered me hospitality. It was none of our race, if you understand what I mean. But no, I would rather not water it down myself. It does seem something of a, of a sacrilege. Yep. I take it they've got a fire going nearby. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a spit going, yeah. Okay, I'll 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 sit myself down and um, I'll sort of I'll sort of whisper to my familiar to kind of keep out of the way for now. We don't know how the we don't know how the, mm -hmm. these guys are cool. Ca Cameron, Cameron, uh, the the these fine fellows were uh, asking if we could regale them with the tale of how our disparate but happy band came to be together. As a as a man of words and of learning, perhaps you would care to you would care to share the tale with them. I'm sure it would be. I'm sure it would sound better coming from your lips than from my own, uh, my, my own crude ramblings. You mean the how how we ended up traveling together? Yes, how we ended up traveling together. Why we're going to Kazkarad, the Crown, all of that sort of thing. <laughs> well, I, I actually don't know if we've established how long we've been traveling together originally. But, um... I think we talked about like a six months to a year situation. Mm -hmm. Well, well, it's going to be more than that by now because we yeah. spent a lot of time traveling. Well, I'll sit down. I'll take out one of the my books, but I won't actually read the book. I just kind of hold it almost like a, a totem as I sort of warm myself against the fire. I look over at Tyrell, which I'm assuming he's either invisible or he's yodeling yudl somewhere. Um. Well, I mean, if my presence isn't like directly required, I probably would have stayed by that mirror but uh i, I like to think to be honest as like cameron starts telling the story because we know there's like elven just slip away yeah. but i was gonna say we know there's elven shiz around there so i'll probably actually you know i'm like i'll probably actually be saying to him i'll be like uh, oh yes sir uh, I, I noticed that uh, some of the the things in this area are of a uh, elven origin um perhaps i'm sorry i don't know um all of your backgrounds but um perhaps once um Cameron has finished telling his tale. Perhaps uh, my other associate, uh, Tyrael, could help shed some light on the uh, on the things of woodland nature that are around here. Well, uh, unless your friend knows where to dig, uh, I'm not sure if we require these services. But anyway. Well, continue, uh, Bright Eyes. Right, I've been called worse. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll try and flower it up a bit. I'll, a bit say, well, you know, the, the world, you know, a coming darkness has been felt across the world. <laughs> the great scholars. You can feel it in the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the human kingdoms have, have sensed the coming of the great, of the great, <laughs> you know, prophesies return. Um, I don't know where actually Glavia was previous to his meeting. He's probably uh, probably like in a dwarven hold somewhere else. Or... Yeah, I think he's mentioned that he's been... Mm -hmm. Like, you know that he's a rune caster, and he's also stated that that's not approved in society. Yeah, yeah. I I've mentioned previously that I'm originally from Hammerhold, which is like the other dwarven hold. But I've because like being a room cast is like seen as like dead eccentric and it's like frowned upon. I've basically been like living as a hermit until like someone I'd sworn an oath of fealty to was like, Oh, what up? We need someone to go and like recover this crown and you're it. I'm kind of, I'm gonna, I'll kind of, I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to bother them with the jargon of like a, a quest. I was like, you know, an old, an old alliance with our kingdoms was invoked. We must that we must gather to find and use these crowns of legend. Lavia, whom comes from far from this place, he was sent from his kingdom at the behest of the current ruler of the. I don't know, I actually can't remember the current ruler's name. But he he has mentioned. 
Well, you see, Cameron, I was actually sent by Prince Thraduk. Prince Thraduk, yes. Tyrell, you know, had been looking after the borderlands for quite some time in his own domain. He elected to come to our aid. He alone felt or sensed the danger at hand. I myself, um, recently, a few in the previous years, was a teacher, in fact, but found myself uh, um, in the employ of the Dark Watchers, <laughs> whom I am a member. <laughs> what, what, what sort of teacher goes prancing around these parts? That's, that is a fair question. One that uh, had to teacher take Teacher in a... <laughs> <laughs> More so I had, to, um, I had to take a career change um, unannounced. But uh, I, I don't regret finding myself out here with these fine individuals. We, we're doing good work. Right. Anyway, here's what your nog is going to be buying. And um, yeah. uh, uh, Thralan is, is starting to, you know, hand out a couple. Uh, it's like dead basic, you know, camp kit. Uh, so but he's got like very basic containers with like slivers of the off the spit, like just carved into the little cup and uh, starts handing out those. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna get some sticks and like the rest of mm -hmm. my like meat sticks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna set them a little way on the sticks from the fire, so I can mm -hmm. basically like turn yeah, them into like them. jerky and like stash mm -hmm. them away for like during the journey. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll eat mine slowly and methodically as I as I consider these guys, and I'll ask whoever whoever will answer me. So how long have you guys been out here? What what have you found? No, this is not on a map of any of any place that I'm aware of. Yeah, I wouldn't. This is very old. Uh, we've been here a couple seasons now, all told. Like, not on location necessarily, but we've come around for a few times. There's still a lot of things in the ground. And uh, you can see in the back, um, the couple dwarves that Thralan, Thralan has... Uh, mm -hmm. Has sent off to like basically buy the humans rations of nog, so that the dwarves don't have to dilute it. And you 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 seen in the background, uh, there's like some um, shiny filigree like detail that you imagine might have been like scraped off of a, like a pillar or something like inlaid metal scraped off from uh, some stonework. Um, they're exchanging basically trinkets. So some of the doors are like, okay, so you can have these trinkets so that we can have all the nog. <laughs> this is that, a deal that needs to be struck. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going on in the background okay. as, as you're you're eating your. I don't ration. get obviously as, as a human wizard of of extraordinary ability. I don't, uh, you know, I don't see the fuss about this alcohol. But mm. we well, that's because you've not tried it, Cameron. That's why. It doesn't seem that appealing to me. It so. I'll just sort of like slide my like tin mug like over to him like in case he wants a little sip. <laughs> but but I'll be like <laughs> So while all that is mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. um I've slunk back to the mirror. Yep. To the pond. Yep. Um and it is I, and the ruins around it, I'd like to investigate them. Mm -hmm. uh, more closely, we didn't really have a chance. Yeah, no, time. we we sort of arrived there and then then we quit. So um, yeah, I'd like to investigate that if possible, mm -hmm. especially the the surface, the mirror, the water, the pond. Yeah. So as as determined before, uh, yeah, the stonework is is fine. It is weathered, of course. It's here uh, at the mercy of, of the age, elements. Obviously, I'm not. Um, as, it, as intimately uh, knowledgeable with stonework, yeah. but do I recognize these ruins? Have I heard of them before? Um, yeah, um, I think you can sort of start to like vaguely guess due to the fact that you don't really recall any elven things this far out. Hmm. So it must have been a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's not in recent, you know, memory. Like this is 
this is from the, not good in the old last days. 400 years at least you yeah, know no like no no, no not at all like that's yeah. that's way too little mm-hmm. like this is from the good old days like when things were kind of good right um, uh, and uh, yeah it's it's not something that you would have ever even heard of now you go about uh, of course the um, the stone work is is high quality uh, it's weathered because it's been here forever <laughs> at the mercy of the elements now because it's been ab- abandoned for a long time uh, the pool itself, as I mentioned, the water is fetid because it's all the detritus of nature isn't there. Uh, it's half frozen uh, because of the temperature, and it's just very dark. Uh, and you can pick up some of the, um, you can pick up from some of the other bits of the ruins here. Now it's it's not like this is a very big structure as such, mm-hmm. which doesn't really surprise you. You're sort of getting the idea that this might have been once like a garden area with maybe like one, you know, gazebo type thing somewhere. Mm-hmm. But like it's an open air. Like the point is to be open air. Uh, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you can go about, you see some still intact uh, sort of detail work, some painting here and there, some inlaid bits that suggest that this was a place of, of course, reflection. That goes without saying because you have the pool here. But in addition to that, it's um, you, you pick up hints that this might have been like a refuge for artists. And then some of the further, more esoteric clues, you eventually figure it out that they probably relate to stargazing. Mm. So this was probably some kind of because it's fairly distant from you know your current heartlands Mm. so it was probably like a remote sanctuary or something uh for artists and and you know elven stargazers Mm. in some distant past when things were actually good and you could live here Mm. (laughs) this far out yeah and not get murdered by people you know Mm. humans (sighs) So obviously it's been a long time since this place has been used for its intended purpose. Yeah, a very long time if, if you have your facts right. Um, is there any way for me to get a sense of whether or not it can still be used as intended? Uh, you, could, you could try doing that. Uh, let's, mm-hmm. let's see. Let's see what the uh, uh, element star thing says. Um, I mean, I have elf wise, but I don't believe I have the stargazer ability. Yeah. Yeah. Although I'd love to learn it. Yeah, I mean, um, if you wanted to, if we can try to get that going, we uh, absolutely have the place here to do that. Because I think the skills are slightly different than the actual spell songs themselves, where yeah, yeah. they work the same, I believe, or similarly to normal type yeah. skills. Oh, here we go. So um, it's the Starcraft. Here we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's the. Um... Oh yeah, Starcraft. That's uh, is that the no, I lied. Is it, that's the crafting one. I apologize. Yeah. So um, it's the Song of the Eldar. Is there you go. Is the one. So oh, on uh, page two hundred and ninety-eight. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, it's academic. You're free to you know give it a go if mm. you wanted to. Okay, um, but because I'm learning this raw, obviously I can't fork or anything of that. I have to just sort of yeah, yeah. It's just makes the effort. Up. Okay, but. but it's rooted in perception, so yeah, right, yeah. So I have a fair, easy as fair pie. chance as, as for me. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, all right. So, um, where's my sheet? Hold on a second. Um, let's just put in the song of the Eldar. I was hoping this would come up. I actually wanted to learn this one for a while, and I only need to do it once to learn it. Yeah, that's I'm yep. so <laughs> yep. because I'm because so fucking good. Elf, um, right? Yeah, exactly. It's elf bullshit, right? Um, okay. <laughs> So what is the, uh, the challenge, the obstacle? Right. So what, what are you trying to do here? What are you trying to determine? How um, do you use this? Obviously, I've gotten a sense that it was used for some sort of meditative reflection to, to kind yeah. of kind yeah. touch with the natural world yeah. and perhaps Sounds. even the great song, essentially, uh, yeah. the, 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 the chorus that we all kind of yeah. come from and are part of. So I'm thinking, um, you know, I, I, you know, we're going in sort of in charter waters. I want, I want to sort of, maybe perhaps, take advantage of this 
place to perhaps maybe tap into that sort of reflection. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have the same powers that uh, of seeing the fates in the stone as Glarvir mm -hmm. does or the strange sorceries, but this is um, my place and my people's place. So I'd like to try to tap into it if possible. So if you want like specific things off the menu, uh, 258 has, I think, brilliant examples at the top left. Because those are, yep, under astrology, because that's what this. Oh, means. right. It's basically aping yep. astrology. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And okay. astrology um, has brilliant examples there for what, what you could I get to the right page. latch on to. Uh, where are your astrology? Oh, Bass, there we go. <clears throat> uh, if you don't give me just one second to take yeah, a quick gander. No um, okay. Yeah, drink them if you have them. Like nog, nogs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's some interesting ones there, I think. I think. Oh, yeah, this is really good. But I think, I think yeah, I think for my level of ability, which is none, at this moment, at this moment, um, and considering we are at the beginning of an enterprise, mm -hmm. I think uh, obstacle two, I believe, for the determining uh, that's, the auspices. That's the that's the second one. Uh, sorry, that's the last one. So determining no, that's the interpreting celestial phenomena or omens is the last one. Yeah. So, so you want the uh, auspices of beginning an enterprise, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's 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 a, that's a three. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, yeah, is it the? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's a little bit, you know, because understood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they don't, the, the, the text organized. just runs. <laughs> three is yeah. fine. Yeah, that, it's, that, it's that a three. Is the one I would like to try for. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, and considering I have a nine perception, I have a fair shot of actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Imagine having nine <laughs> um, baseline. I get the skill, I get the aptitude point whether I fail or, yep, or succeed. Absolutely. Right? You you only have to try. I kind of want this to succeed though. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a point of persona into it, I think, as well, just because I think so. It's a it's a three, it'll go up to a six, right? So yeah, I'll have a it, ten yeah. and so with ten dice, that's a fair that's a fair shot of maybe getting at least one success or or maybe a six. Um, okay, we'll give it a whirl. Oh. oh, what did I get? Yep. Uh, oh, get oh, 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 that persona was so worth it. And oh. you get three sixes if you want to pump uh, a fate into your perception here. You can re-roll those if you want to, but you don't have to. Would that, would that would, would more successes give me better information or better answers? I, I would say maybe not in this case because you already kind of hit it out of the park. Right, like, yeah, got yeah. it. This, okay. this is just for you if you want to put fate into your perception, you know. Oh, to, into my, oh, yeah, right. To, to spend oh, that. Um, um, and my perception is one of my boss ass. Like, yeah. that's the thing yeah. I have closest to shading, really, yeah. probably. Yeah, if, like, imagine having gray nine perception. <laughs> could I, could I re-roll, so I can re-roll one of them. But you you can reroll roll. three, three sixes yeah, let's do off it. of that. Let's do it. Nah, let's fine. Let's... You, you, you convinced me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's they're three. They're rolling sixes, right? Yeah, the sixes. Yeah. And you can reroll that six. <laughs> you can reroll that one six as we, again. Oh, oh, I can. So I can. Yeah, get another it explodes. Oh, yeah. Screw it. Let's do yeah. it. Let's Let, go. For let's it. go for ten successes, um, guys. Yeah. <laughs> let's go for the stars. We literally. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's cool. Let's uh, throw that in there. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, that's so, success. That is a yeah, good ten, ten successes. Yeah. Good job. Good there job. Go. It's elf <laughs> bullshit at the play. There you go. <laughs> so, right. um, the auspices of uh, beginning an enterprise. Yeah. Oh, and that counts as a. Was that kind of as a difficult or challenging? Uh, uh, it, it does nothing aside from giving oh, you the tick. Getting and, my aptitude yeah. tick, right? Yeah. And it. then, of course, oh, right, it's not a straight perception yeah. roll. That's yeah. right. I apologize. Yeah. Um, but I can still put up in the fate, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Artha goes into the perception, but gotcha. you, the, you just get the skill now. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's cool. So, right. um, I'm so glad I used that persona point. It's, it's rather broad in, you know, your interpretation of mm -hmm. like the auspices of beginning an enterprise but so you peer into the 
the black pool, half frozen, sticks sticking out of it, leaves, autumn leaves still uh, floating on the cold water. It takes you a while, but you eventually figure out something's wrong with the pool. It doesn't reflect the stars above. It's a clear night. No stars in the pool. And um, experimentally, you start bringing out a couple of the rhymes of the Song of the Eldar. Uh, you, you sing the song of your people, as it were. And uh, little by little, the sort of black surface of the reflecting pool actually starts accurately <laughs> reflecting the night sky. It mm. didn't do that at first. You don't know what that's about. You didn't pick up on it for quite a long while. And that's also disturbing uh, why it took so long. But some, you, you sing to the pool and it, it, starts, it starts doing the thing that you expect it to, which is to act like water and reflect. Uh, and you, you gaze at the stars in the pool. The dark summons images into, you're not sure because you haven't really done this before. Uh, you're not sure if the images are in the water or in your sort of mind's eye, but you see the um, you see the heroes, the three arriving in Mulbrannan successfully. Uh, Mulbrannan, sorry, Cascarat. Uh, yeah, Cascarat successfully, <clears throat> and um, you you get snatches of. You know, Cameron waving a torch in the dark, like keeping a hand on dusty, ancient stone, like chiseled stone wall worked by the hands of ancient dwarves. Cameron stumbling forward in the dark. Larvir is is trying to guide him along. And uh, you can see yourself uh, fighting something off that you don't see what it is. But there's there's a weapon that comes into your mind's eye, and there are you. There's you, uh, like fending it off and um, trying to you know cover the the advance of these two as you go. You get another shot of a cavernous hall, and you're filled with sadness. You don't know what that's about, but it's uh, it's like a high shot of the three of you, a single torch, and you're walking alone in this cavernous hall. The footsteps echoing uh, like sad, <laughs> rattling in this. It feels funereal to you somehow in this sort of dream logic way. Uh, and it, it seems to be going like it's like you, you are clearly the pool is showing you you will make it into Kaskarad, you will make it into these lost halls. It's it's going to work. Like you you will get there. Mm -hmm. But the, the pool as established because it's the beginnings of this enterprise. There's something there that haunts you. You know that uh, you were fighting it off. Mm -hmm. You successfully fought it off, but it's something that it keeps nagging in your the back of your mind as you watch the three of you walking across this massive hall, you know that something's in the dark still. And I feel like we're being stalked. Yeah, yeah, you feel like you're being stalked and that you're being surrounded. You think there's more than the thing that you, you fought off. And uh, you're not quite sure if you can make it back properly. So it's, it's a sort of like you can see the point mm -hmm. where you sort of have to pick, do we keep going? because I don't know if we can make it back still if we decide to go back. Uh, but yeah, it, it does go well, but you, you're you aware of this, like a, a danger in the shadows that will be haunting your steps when you get in. Hmm. As I experienced the vision in the pool, um, the tone of the song 
grows mournful and sad um, and carries throughout the wood. You know, this was a place where we made our music, where we, mm-hmm. we gazed the stars. No elf has been here possibly for thousands of years. And so for the first time, this forest and the area surrounding it uh, rings with our song again. And um, when I finish and the vision recedes, um, I will rise. I will cast my gaze to the stars and around the ruins. I'll bow my head for a quiet moment or two, and then I will return back to the camp. There's there's a point where you realize that it, it feels like um, it, it it truly feels like a lament, even if it wasn't one. When you realize that the forest, as you would know it to be, cannot join you in the song, the rustling of the leaves is not here because it's winter. Mm. Uh, there's no leaves in the trees, mm. so the the trees, rather than being your sort of choir. Mm-hmm. Now they're just mute bystanders. And as you start walking towards the camp, uh, there's like the one errant leaf that was still stuck on one of the trees that like detaches and like falls, gets stuck on your cloak. I'll, I'll put my hand to it. Uh, I will take it from my cloak and I will carefully put it in a belt pouch. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a like frost rimmed golden ash tree uh, leaf that was somehow still golden, uh, but, but frozen mm-hmm. on the tree. And you, you come back just in time to see these. <laughs> There's those humans and dwarves apparently trading. Um, you think you, you, you watched uh, over the, the ruin site. So they've, they've probably been scraping off, you know, the, the filigree fillings on the, pillars and whatnot mm. uh, they're, they're trading trinkets of mm. elven make is clearly you can see um mm. and um you it's a short leap of logic for you that that's what they're digging out of the ground you mm-hmm. probably already figured that out but i did and i didn't perhaps in my desire to commune with the pool perhaps didn't realize how angry that this would make me. But when I see them bartering my people's legacy, like their tea trinkets for yeah, it's basically a cask of elven <laughs> or a dwarven, yeah, dwarven. Ale, I should say, mm-hmm. um, I am a little peekered, let's say. Uh, There's a shout that goes up when they see that you're, you're arriving. It's like, hey... Woodland friend, there's meat and water if you want it. I see. Well, might I uh, might I inspect your merchandise first? Uh, After all, they do appear to be authentically elven trinkets. Would you mind if I perused them? Uh, Thralan, the uh the sort of dude doing the carving on the deer. It's like, uh, no, 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 no. We uh, we did say when you sat down for the dinner, this is all taken. This, this is all spoken for. And while regularly we would be in business, however, we the, these are already solved. I see. Well, would you mind if I still took a glance? I have no intention on... Uh pilfering your hard-earned <laughs> gains if long that as, is what you are implying lo- so long as no one's stealing everyone's friends are on the fire very well thank you yeah you know if uh, this is sort of in, in general to i guess cameron and, and glarber because they're sitting down uh Thralan says you know if if you um don't fancy going up all the way the mountain um, we could cut you in a in the deal, Greybeard. You you have a 
No. If you have a hefty hand, you could swing a shovel and a, a pick. I have done some mining in my time. Um, and Bright Eyes here... Well, uh, we have brushes um, and, and things that need brushing. And, um, yeah, Barbara. Qu quick question, Matthew. Did you have a sip of my um, dwarven ale? Nah. I've seen what it does to people. Don't know what you're missing, mate. Don't know what you're missing. <laughs> I've seen what it does to people. It, it makes grown Weak men just people. turn into... <laughs> Weak people who don't have the stones does, for um, good dwarven ale. Does, does Tyrell look, like, visibly angry? Is he giving off real, like... Um, you have traveled with Tyrell long enough to know that he is uh, enraged. Okay. We, we know, we, we know he likes to dip his toe into that spike. Concealing. Bullshit, you know? Yeah, and concealing that um, well enough for outsiders, but not well enough for either of you to not realize it. Okay, I'll just I'll give him a long kind of look. and um, That's very kind offer that you... <clears throat> very kind that of you offered to you find me work in brushing and sweeping and cleaning. Um, yeah, so cleaning the things we pick up from the ground. A good, a, a good hard day's work is never, you know, never without its reward. However, we do have a... Uh, we have a kind of a quest, a kind of an obligation. A <laughs> quest. I, uh, Cameron is right. We have, we have sworn to see this through to the end. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how, how important that is. Ah, oh, we're we're doing that, are we? Oh, yeah. But did just... you, um, when you you guys have been excavating this area, did you? You know, speak to the local elves when you started digging up their, their relics? Oh, yes, yes. We spoke to the local elves. He, he makes a show of looking around. Oh, it seems they're all gone now. They are around. It's just they can be hard to spot, believe me. <laughs> very, very hard. Now then, Cameron, I'm sure if there were elves in the vicinity, when this started going on, they would have made themselves known. Would that not be correct, Terrell? Uh, I'm... I'm near the objects I, I yeah. was about yeah, to so there's, there's like the, them. Yeah, Before, there's their like yeah. whole like tent. I imagine where, it's like, yeah, yeah they're, they're on a display perhaps, you know, a yeah. uh, map yeah. maybe perhaps. Yeah, they're, they're uh, like processing them. As, uh, as I'm about to begin to, to look at them, I'll respond to Glavia. Yes, they would all be dead by now if we were here. But, and, uh, and obviously my, my voice will they're... carry because as per, as per my traits, I'm like shouting my tits off. I'm just not trying to deafen mm -hmm. you all. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I understand. Everything that comes out of your character's mouth is full on Brian Blessed. Yeah, pr pretty much, yeah. Has no one not slept with my daughter? <laughs> Sorry. I'm a I'm big Brian Blessed fan from uh, in the uh, Echo Audius. Anyway, uh, but yes, um, I would like to inspect the Elven artifacts. Hmm. Um, you see, of course, things that have been pried off of buildings basically so the ruins probably but mm -hmm. also there's arrowheads like inscribed with elven imagery uh, there's some belt buckles um some maybe like dining wear so this is like mm -hmm. forks and, and such there's a goblet or two um it's you know whatever would be in a sort of well, it's it's mostly sort of like household things that they have uh, mm -hmm. currently on display here, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they're sort of brushing them off, like they have uh, like bristle brushes sure. going going hard at them. And, Do uh, I uh, on any of the items, uh, mm. perhaps inscriptions or mm. even beyond that? Do I sense anything that um, perhaps uh, either it was tied to the purpose uh, around the pool? or at the pool, or perhaps just themselves wrought by one of our artisans. Because again, we imbue our objects mm -hmm. oftentimes with our songs, and so that they are objects of power. And uh, those objects should not be in a curio mm -hmm. cabinet somewhere. So. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing um, that, I'm sat next to uh, Cameron Miller. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. It's very no good. Uh -huh. I'm quite all right. <laughs> wow, there's no so, time for taste. So you come to the conclusion, none of these are probably imbued with the magic of the elves. 
they are all elven make would fetch a good price you think probably uh, but it doesn't have it does it seems to be the things that you would use regularly in in life so common it doesn't items yeah common common sort of things and um none of them like stick out as oh this is uh this is one of the lost seeing stones <laughs> like there's, right. yeah, not, there's none of that but there's like the sort of silver knife with the like calligraphy on the, the, on the, the handle green and, yeah and the, yeah. the the jewel embedded in the mm. in the um pommel mm. and uh but yeah, nothing of true uh sorceress or i'm no. sorry mystical or no. historical work no because There's... obviously common objects i'm annoyed mm -hmm. but I'm not going to murder them all just because of a few mm -hmm. knives. But if it was yeah. something that was truly a value, uh, I yeah. want to see it. Um, is it possible? You named you named him Thralin, correct? Uh, Thralin, yeah, the seemingly the sort of spokesperson for. May the... I may I turn to Thral? I, may, I turn to Thralin, mm. and uh, I would like to say, is this the full extent of your stock? Is this all that you have found here? uh for the season yeah and now it's getting too cold to put the picks to the the ground with you know uh sensible effort like we could keep going but the season is coming to a close now right we're gonna have to take this in soon i understand but this these are the sorts of objects you have found here nothing nothing no, else we, we we found some things before um that that wasn't you know forks and, and pans and <laughs> stuff but of course that's that's what you take first right of course that's first season. Um, yeah. could I, um, I know this might be a stab in the dark, but could I see if I can identify this area, this place, maybe this... this... If, if you want to roll a wise for something, yeah. I mean, well, go I've got ahead. obscure history, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I can, I can pick up a few details. Yeah, it's, you know, let me let me know what you're doing with your thing. because I can help him with that. I can elf a forest wise in if people want to fork. Or, so uh, yeah, help, I want to. This is my idea because we're not too far from the dwarven lands, right? Yeah, no, the mountains are there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of what is the, what is the significance of this place in the shadow of the dwarven? Uh, is it a city or is it a hole? They call it, isn't it? Yeah, they're they're holes. basically a city. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. basically a mountain-sized area of uh, dwarves. Of Kazkarad. Mm -hmm. The anvil, oh, anvil hole. hole mm -hmm. you know? Must have had. You know, I always, I always think that these mountain holes must have very decent population density, mm -hmm. if if they're really built from top to bottom into the living earth. So he's, you know? he's my thinking, is that perhaps on some level the dwarfs and the elves in the area might have known about at some point known about the ocean underground, and sort of pinpointing this place may give me a clue to help me to find this this underground river this you know if you know if the if the if the, if the elven city is called gateway to you know to secret ocean <laughs> then and in you know like oh this might actually connect to the place we're actually trying to get to there might be stuff here we can use or on the right track right so if we're looking at history yeah um... and also i just kind of want to i, I don't want to like tell Kyrell his own history that's not that sounds a bit offensive but like I kind of want to relate to him by like giving him a few pieces of information of his of his own history to show that like you know I've learned a bit about his people and you know I understand that this place is maybe sacred to him maybe maybe even really important site for all I know to you know this may be this may have been an ancient uh, elven graveyard you know not, not many like acorn coffins here I don't know right so this is this is kind of interesting because uh, you don't have ancient history, which is also a thing. You oh, have come obscure on, man. history. Yeah, yeah. So obscure history is this a, that will fit the bill? Okay, I can do uh, it, it does. It does, but we need to think about it in that term. Like it's it's right, not okay. ancient history; it's obscure history. So, so obscure so, facts and nuggets of information yeah, yeah. you might have heard along the way. Um, yeah, rather than yeah. oh, this was established by Gilgalad in the in the first age. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have elf wise, so I mean, if if if, if there was anything to know, um, either was beyond my score of four with elf wise, which case then, 
Or, you know, I would have known it readily without a roll. It'd be good to know or... if this place bears a curse of some description. That's why there's no one around anymore. You well, these, like... these are all things that sound very good for, for rolling purposes. So mm-hmm. if you guys want to determine, is there a curse on this ancient elven forest? Yeah, I'm trying to determine, well, basically I'm trying to determine what this place was called, if it, if it had a name, if, if I like, have read it somewhere. Right. If the if it was if there was like a, a fact that I've been passed around, I mean, I world would have known that if, if it was knowable, correct, more or less. Um, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily, but um, because this is this is way old, mm-hmm. and it's not in the current sort of zeitgeist, I guess. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Of, uh, of the it's not like a, a yeah. fact that, that would relate to either why the elves are not here, so it could be a curse or. Mm-hmm. Um, why what happened to the elves in relation to being next to the dwarf okay so pick one uh which one oh, man. are you trying to d- determine um why the elves aren't here anymore okay so gonna... why the elves aren't here anymore does sound kind of obscure <laughs> and i can help out with that yeah you can so... you can help with your yeah. pick pick your remind me with help mm-hmm. actions that i don't i don't get a benefit yeah I just help them. uh yeah you you just give an extra die to cameron and then oh, you oh. get to tick your your oh i do get to tick yeah you did you just... tick yep Perfection. I will then take on elf wise then because yep. it's, I believe, the most yep. relevant. Mm-hmm. So okay. go ahead and add a die there, uh, Cameron. Right. So I get an extra die. It's, it's obscure history. Boom, baby. What's yeah. the difficulty? Obscure, obscure history. Now, this is the thing. The, um, ah, the list for obscure history is kind of like we need to um, interpret this a little bit. I'm kind of inclined to say this would match the uh, history of the ones who lost the war, which would mm. be obstacle six, but that seems mm. a bit like unnecessarily brutal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would say maybe we'll go with uh, could, obscure could... figure in history four. Oh, Let's go with four. That seems more reasonable. He's yeah. gonna give me a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, he's gonna give me, he's gonna well, give so. me a chance. Yeah. Okay. So don't forget that. Uh, oh, no, I'm not using. So I'm not using. I'm not going to use Arthur on this uh, because it's not like this it's is, not something this, desperate to know. Yeah, it's, it's more, more like I'd like to know. Type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so close. So close. Do you get any sixes in there? No sixes either. No. Oh. oh. Um. Oh, you're rolling with two dice. Okay. <laughs> Working on those skills. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It's so close, though. There's nothing we can do yeah. at the stage, right? Yeah. Um, nope. Unfortunately, uh, no. Yeah. Oh, it would man. have been a six, uh, and then you. you yeah. Right. Out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Got a chance, but I did get a Ooh. challenging tick. Yeah, you get a challenging now, Drury. What is your elf wise? Oh, I believe it is four. Four. Okay, you get a difficult tick on that. Oh, banger. Okay. All right. I like that. Oh. Right. Well, um, <laughs> so I would have approached him uh, after re examining the trinkets. He would have yeah. asked me some questions, kind yeah, of, you, you, you know, you I would convey some of the basic information yeah. about the purpose yeah, you, of this you place down. and yeah. all that. Well, I think, I think um, I've heard of this place. Is this the limit? <laughs> <laughs> so, why did the elves leave this place? Um, you're not sure really but you come to the conclusion like comparing notes basically you come to the conclusion that this was uh, as uh Terrell was sort of trying to uh yeah. figure out anyway on his own uh this was abandoned uh a very long time ago indeed um and it we was when this was used uh, that was when we had the three crowns See, I, I kind of, I feel some empathy towards Tyrell in this because from a human perspective, from, you know, knowing a little bit about history, you know, and studying that there's so much of human stuff that's been abandoned and reclaimed and salvaged, but we live so little compared to an elf that mm-hmm. it's, there's a lot more of a disconnect between that time. So it's yeah. like, it's almost like another civilization almost, yeah. but to him, it's almost like just his grandfather's like town that's been i could have i could have grown up in a garden like this essentially yeah so i I, Um, you know i'm looking at him thinking i could see why he'd be so angry because it's almost like his neighborhood being trashed exactly there's there's no it's hard of him to remove himself from it 
Yeah. So I think the uh, the sort of effect here is like that's that's what you can put together um, because you did not succeed in that. And the sort of uh, one day I will. The, the reason why this failing this is bad is because uh, Thralen has been listening in and he's you know eating his dinner as well and has offered to rel some deer if he wants. And uh, he's I'll accept so, at the stage. Yeah. yeah. He's listening in and he's like, yeah, it's. It's all kinds of old, really. Uh, I, I don't like we've we've had a couple of sharp eyes on the uh, on the rotation a couple of seasons back, and uh, couldn't really tell. Um, I, I suppose it's it's a very long time ago. Not really a, a you know a scholar myself, really, aside from the you know the shovel and the the pick, but you know. Uh, it's it's old enough that the uh, folks back in Riathil are paying top coin for it. So who's who's yeah. paying for this? Who's who's funding your expedition? Uh, the, you know the, the folks back in Riathil. You know. Uh, well, they must have, they must have a lot of resources to have you all the way out here. Oh yeah 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 the 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 people uh, fancying you know the, the big campfires and stuff. Church they, the um, church has got you here. Well, if that's you know how you want to put it, then I suppose they're they've got a they've got a real appreciation for all kinds of old trinkets. So do they know? Yeah, do yeah, they know? There, there's I, I don't want to call it a bounty because we're not killing people out here. But why would, um, no, why would they, you're why just would acquiring any, history is, of a of a lost a, people. This is these are elven cultural artifacts. The churches. It's about the, the flame of, of humankind. They they they're not about our civilized our salvation. Our I'll future. put a hand on Cameron's soul, shoulder, so and I will what? I will lean in close to his ear, close enough that I almost touch his ear with my lips, and I'll say, "We kill them all at midnight." What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to execute order sixty six. <laughs> <laughs> Get out the blaster. <laughs> now, kill, kill um, the younglings. Hey, they go first. Um, <laughs> I'll say to him simply that our objects often have power of their own. And I'll, you know, pull away at that point. Okay, sort of nod. Okay. Huh. Just sorry, it was just I, I, I just find it unusual because dwarf, you know, dwarven merchants and excavators tend to not really work for human organizations; they keep to themselves. This is, this <laughs> well, is unusual. well, we're not exactly in Mulbrannan, are we? Then you know, uh, sends a smile towards Glover. True I, enough. I, I just sort of like raise raise my like drinking vessel to him and say, "Hi, right, that's true." Yeah, so we we do as we can. And uh, Fair. all folks in Riathil, a lot of coin, very enthusiastic. Mm. And here's the here's the real kicker. You if if you find um, like an old armoire or something like not so much about the old you know robes and stuff. But if you find jewelry enough, like a tiara. They will give you sacks of silver for that. Oh no! Oh boy! They'll they'll oh, give boy. you. I, I, <laughs> it's like I, an I, alarm going off we, in my head. One, we took back one. I I think it would would have been called a tiara. I do, apologies, not a jeweler. Don't oh, know no. the terminology, but a band a you crown. Would a band you would put on a hand. A diadem. A diadem. Yeah. Thank you, Glavia. Um, it all. I call it all three of these, and you. Probably get a bonus from them, them with the pay. So uh, oh. that's that's really the, the the big deal that we're trying to dig here. Not really hopeful that we can find another one, but you know we make do with the forks and the when knives. When did you acquire this item? Oh, it must have been a. It's a couple of couple of seasons ago now. Do you know who you do you recall who you sold it to? I and mean, you said uh, it was Riathel. Riathel, yeah. The, Fox with the big bags of silver. Um, There's some kind of organization there. That... Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they got the whole thing going where they where they have big towers, really like fires going on inside. Um, 
the 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 torch of the flame they yeah 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 yeah. never really paid too much mind to that but uh you know more about the the silver really of course Thralon. uh you have to understand i am a enthusiast of my mm. own culture and i would love to meet others who feel the same perhaps i can help them authenticate their items um being a bit of a student myself sure Perhaps if you could give me a couple of names, uh, we could perhaps mm, uh, take a brief detour to this lovely city that you're describing and uh, inquire. Okay, I'll I'll scratch up a couple names that he can spout out. He's like, yeah, yeah I'll, like I said, like I said, if if you want to, like I can cut you in on the deal. And if we have an expert on hand to call everything by its fancy name bump up the price did so did they did they know this location did they send you here knowing it was here no no no, no. we we scoped this out but we, we, are you, you returning know. to your base of operations yeah, 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 yeah. As, well, as as soon as the the ground goes frozen enough we can't put a pick to it without wow. you know spending all day on it then we'll mm. need to head back very did they, soon did, I think. did they give you like uh are they, were they looking for a particular type of elven item or, or was it just whatever they he could just said it it's 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 anything really you pull off the ground looks old enough take it to them mm. get paid I, i'd hazard a gas camera and they're after a crown or or a diadem even indeed yes. subtle, we would we would diadem. refer to them as diadems in your language well in this common language but i digress mm. what are they up to <clears throat> cameron Perhaps we can confer. Uh, Thrallon, while you come up with those names, mm. we and perhaps terms of us uh, joining our enterprise temporarily, of course, uh, I'd like to confer with my associates. One moment, please. I've got, I've got, I've got my my. Love my, you. My, yeah. My full, my furred brow has got a furred brow. I'm like. I'm going is, to. This is like. Escort them both uh, to the actually to the area by the pool. Um, which is further away from the encampment. Glarvir, at a quiet whisper, still sounds like he's, you know, firing a cannon. So I'm trying to... I don't know what you mean! You're, you're overly loud, my friend. And I need... I need... Hmm. So. I know it's a detour. However, <laughs> twofold... Uh, one, if they are again seeking crowns and diadems and and such, they may very well believe that this part of the world has their crown. And of course, they're incorrect according to our information, but they're not far off. So perhaps we should investigate that. And frankly, on a more personal note, I would feel more comfortable if we did not leave possible hmm, items of power in the hands of humans, especially the Covenant of the Flame. Do you really believe these sort of things are held here? That diadem that Fraun described could very well be just a simple decorative piece, however. Hmm. My people... Of the way we wrought yeah. our works, we put our songs into them, our power. Yeah, I understand that. And, the and, very you know, you know, you know, Tyrell, I feel I, stuff I, of creation. I feel I feel your grieve, grievance at this. It, it seeing one's history dug up is I is distasteful. But trying to use my words, but they're all very lucky that they have they do, information. They, they do not understand that the, how that must be for you. But we are on the clock here somewhat. We do, and we're, we're, near, we're near the hold now, right? It's not too far, Glavi. We're not that far from... We're not that close either, as far as I, as far I, as I understand. It. Normally, I would say that we should push on straight to Kazkarad. However, given that this involves the, the Covenant of the Flame, that puts a, a very different reflection it on does it. Put a spin it has does, has does. fate not decreed that your destiny is intertwined with that of the covenant cameron does Ooh. it not does it not seem strange that here 
miles from anywhere mm. we stumble across yet another link to the covenant as though the strands of fate are closing <laughs> on you and drawing you towards your while, destiny. While I, while I appreciate your belief in my fate, right at this second level, it's not helping because if we go to Rayfield unprepared and sort of half half cocked as we are, we're walking into their their powerhouse. Nothing they, they is half cocked about this, Mister Mister Redmond. We, we will have a we will have we will have a cover identity. We shall infiltrate. We shall learn. Look at we us. Shall How are we going to look the subtle? location of the items? And if I have to kill every member of the Covenant of Flame in that city in order to get to them... Don't, Glavia, don't say it. I right. will. <laughs> I understand that, but... Um... I won't start there, though. I, I, I give you my solemn word that I will not start. If we do this, though, we are giving people who may be trying to stop us more time to catch us. And, you know, and hmm. so far we have moved without a great deal, or a great deal of um, adversity because we have a three three individuals on a on a mad quest. But if we go to wrestle, we have to be very careful because I don't you see, there's a little bit of fear in him now. From the this is this is not just like going to a big city. This is going to where the church rules. You you see this. The, well, the way you are looking at it, Cameron, is certainly one way of looking at it. However, you could also choose to look at it as a, a fact-finding expedition that would enable us to find out mm -hmm. more about mm -hmm. our enemy. Okay. You are right, um, we would have to be careful. And whilst I whilst I, I don't know about this cover thing, I, I don't have any truck with deceit or anything of that that nature. But well, then, uh, Pat, let me to do talking and you keep your mouth Close. No, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid that's. I'm afraid I, I cannot. Know, I cannot asking, allow this. It's asking to go the sun and not to rise. I understand. Indeed. Friend, I if know. if we do this, I want to understand what our object, what our objectives are there, because we. I don't I want to spend too long. I outlined our there. objectives quite uh, quite clearly. Indeed, the I, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Terrell. The idea was to to get in, examine this artifact, see if it possesses any power. If if it the does, we'll then of power reassess. Must be, must be taken from them. Indeed, and we do need to know what they may know about the lore and the legends regarding the one true crown of humanity, because they clearly have heard more than we suspected. Our information came, shall we say, directly from the source, but what they may have pieced together over the last several centuries, uh. who knows what they might know? And if we head to Kaskarad. It is. It is. It is unusual. I will um, grant you. They do not in, know what they may know. Well, they're well ob obviously, it makes sense. obviously, they are. They are engaged in a search for the crown. Hence, this. Uh, of course. This offering the these vast sums of silver for anything that's remotely resembling a crown. Indeed. They, they've obviously got plenty of money to be able to do this, so they're not without resources, but. Terrell is right. If there is even a small chance that this item that they have recovered, never mind other items that they may have recovered from other people, have yeah. power that they can use for whatever can I let them have dastardly the... ends. You're quite right, Terrell. We we cannot allow power to remain in that at their disposal. Is, I know these... that our magics are of a different sort to That's, the ones humans cook in, however. Could they ut could they even utilize it? Are they even able to wield this this it is... They are items that contain the power. Given time, study. And indeed, the only way we will know for sure is if we see the items for ourselves. Indeed. And I should... Hmm, hmm, Glavia, you'll perhaps be tickled by this. Um, I have received revelation. Uh, I Hello? believe it would be the way you describe it. Oh, yes. God, not another one. A prophecy. <laughs> I have seen into oh. the water. I point to the pool uh, at our feet. I have seen into the water. I have gained reflection from the stars themselves, and they have shown me what awaits us in Kazgarad. Good news. Our question. Are we by the reflecting pool as we speak? Yeah, I moved us away yeah, there. I yeah. wanted to be so, far away from the encampment. Yeah, I didn't want anyone to really hear. And Glarvia so, can't, can't possibly be yeah, quiet. Can't. Yeah, tune, tune down. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Terrell, as, as Terrell motions, like, I have seen, uh, I have witnessed the reflection of this pool. And as, as you two glance at the pool, straight black, 
knows nothing. It doesn't show the sky at all. There's the debris sticking out, but the otherwise it's like basically might as well be matte black. What's the pool made out of? Uh, the the structure itself is stone. Uh, ah, yeah. like around around. The pool oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're yeah. surrounded in are we all, are we all getting out our special skills now? I'll just look at my sheet, guys, and just find <laughs> my... Let's see what you were about next. See what <laughs> I've got. You summon the spirit of the pool, right? Oh, you. Or the spirits of the Don't forest in the area. Oh, God. Don't tempt me, Frodo. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to... I'm going to kneel down by this pool, and I'm going to start sort of whispering under my breath to the stone that mm -hmm. forms around the pool. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to attempt to use my reason of old stone old stone and okay, well, first things first I'm, I'm only asking i'm only trying to establish like the precise like age of the stone because obviously yeah. this that is works. elven magic yeah, terrail's yeah, yeah, already yeah. seen yeah. all the visions and whatever so i'm just trying to get a bit yeah. of like, extra background info. i'll hold my tongue as you reach down to touch the stone yeah. and, and wait <laughs> um yeah please give, give us the the roller do okay so it's it's only it should only be Obstacle, Obstacle one. Obstacle one, yeah, for the age. age of the stone. Yep. Don't really have any forks or advantages. Which, interestingly enough, does play into what we've been doing. Yeah, before. right, totally. No, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I'm going to put the author into it. <laughs> Obstacle one. Boom. There we go. Nice. <laughs> the stone. Old. It's old speaks as only stone can to a dwarf who has the ears to listen and it speaks to you of a time several thousand years ago when the elves sung this from the ground and bid it to form this pool it's um your sort of estimate is you don't get an exact like it doesn't give you a number yeah, uh, yeah. but it's um like it feels to you that this would be like a couple of ages of the world so let's let's take a guess like four thousand years maybe it's ancient from the ancient days okay so i don't think as i'm sort of talking to the stone i'm examining it you maybe see like it's like a single teardrop that I try and like wipe away like oh got a bit of dust in my eye. And I think the the stone does imply like it's it is not sentient as such. But as as we have the capability of talking to the stone, obviously the world is magical. Right. Yeah. So you you sort of get this like it feels like you're young again when when the stone speaks of the, the days when the elves sung to the stone. And because it's so old it it sort of gives you this like youthful like good feeling um because it, it's almost like meeting with you that you're like long lost grandfather or something yeah and um it's sort of like it, it feels it feels good it feels happy somehow uh talking to something that is so ancient so i i think i'll say in a slightly like cracked but still incredibly loud voice i'm like ah oh, yes many many ages of the world have passed since the the, the forest kin with their magnificent voices sang this place into existence it was a a different time than the the faded dilapidated age that we live in now a more golden time when the sun shone more brightly upon the land upon forest dweller and stone kin alike even for ourselves and uh, we have lost much as well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and well. it's it's not often, Terrell, that you, because of the your work, basically, you mm -hmm. grew up in your homeland, which yeah. is the current civilization. Yeah. And then your work has been sort of martial in nature. Sure, of course. Of so you didn't really spend time in the library reading about history and all that stuff, even though like it's natural to you. I'm versed in it, but I'm not yeah, an you're, expert. Yeah, you're you're not an expert, and this is for the like this is archaeology for the elves as well. Yeah. So that this is like far beyond like you going into a library reading a history book. Uh, this this is like specialists study this stuff because this is old. When we have found the one true crown of humanity. When we have banished the darkness and 
restored peace and tranquility throughout the land. I think perhaps I'll go into archaeology. Well, if any, noble pursuit. If anything, mm. the what the stone has revealed to me makes me more sure than ever of the rightness of our cause. Mm, it, it would warm my heart to to think that perhaps in some small way we have a part to play in returning the world to something of its former glory rather than the the faded remnants that we, we live in now. I we live in the sh shadows of fallen empires these days. Indeed. None of us, not the elves, not the dwarves, and certainly not the humans, have that same strength that we had in ages past. But there is still a flicker, a small spark of that greatness that remains within each of us. And perhaps our quest will go some way to fan those those small flames so that once again the 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 burning fires of enlightenment will sweep across the land. It is what I it's what I said to Rithwin. It's not it is not who we are, it is what we do with the time we have. Aye. To seek and find and not to yield. Yeah, hmm. and you are reminded at this time of, of Rithwin's words where she more or less indicated we we've, we've lost this struggle like there's no struggle anymore there's only defeat and we need to seek to go elsewhere like abandon these lands well and i say bold enough to that <laughs> in pursuit of our noble cause I, let me convey to you the vision of the stars that i received please we will make it to Kazgrad. Of course. However, within those halls, we will be beset by enemies. Many enemies. Let them come! Mm. <laughs> there may come a moment when we will need to decide whether to abandon our course or to continue on. If we choose to continue forward, we will not be able to turn back. We may not even perhaps make it to our final destination, or at least not all of us. We need to be prepared for the worst. Uh, Indeed. However, <clears throat> of course, I had this revelation prior to our lovely conversation with Thralen and his friends. Perhaps although I highly doubt that they have the one true crown in their possession if they did, things would be very different right now. I However, don't even think that they want the one true crown from this place. Mm, I would not be so sure of that, Cameron. The power that that would give your Covenant of the Flame would be unmatched. They would rule over your lands and conquer all of humanity. And then, well, we would have problems in that. Our frontiers you, and you have your crown, right? You have it somewhere. We do. That would not mean that we want to fight a unified horde of humans bent on murdering us and taking our crown for themselves. Indeed, Terrell is correct. The the true what whereas his people and mine still have our crowns. Th this the, wouldn't be our first crusade that we've uh, faced. The true power of the crowns is when they are united and used by an alliance of the three peoples. Indeed. Mm, I, I, I studied that too, yes. And if we, if the, the Covenant of the Flame somehow gets hold of this crown or something approximating it, do you really think that they will reach out with thoughts of alliance to to the elves, to the dwarves? I think not. You speak of our crown, the human crown, if they find it. Aye. If the Covenant acquires it, or even if they acquire the false crown in the north. Or if they become subverted by that dark power itself. Which well, they surely will. They surely so, shall. Um, just, and that is why I took certain steps and precautions like a the, trap the question I The question I, that bugs me is that, the, from my experience with the church, they've never had any interest in elven elven artifacts or the elven people. They, they, they're solely focused on... The Covenant of the Flame cares about power. And hmm. again, our artifacts often... Contain power. Exactly, um, Tyrell. But is that are they use are they 
is that power being bent against my own people? Or are they looking for something here to affect your people? It, it is clear from my point of view that the, as Terrell says, the Covenant of the Flame seeks power and also control. They mm. seek to establish themselves as the, the dominant ruling Dominion force over all. indeed uh, uh, in human society. And it is no great stretch of the imagination that once they have subjugated your human society, they will then have nowhere to look but elsewhere, to the forest kin, to the mountain folk. And of course, I cannot allow that. So, indeed. And they're, uh, they're, as Terrell said, they are not interested in the elven culture or the beauty of the creation of these items. They are interested in the power and the leverage and the control that such items could potentially give them. And that is not a power we can allow them to possess. And more to the point, if we do face our our potential doom in Cascarade, raiding this reliquary not only would return the items into safe hands, but potentially would give us an advantage in our struggles yet to come. Our, our items, even the meanest of them, can be things of exquisite beauty and power. Mm -hmm. So. I understand, Cameron, the risks. I understand that you may fear to tread in this place again. I'm but... more worried about giving people time to catch up to where we are. Oh. Well. From my own studies before I joined you all, I I learned that there is there are forces out there, there are things out there that do not wish this crown to be found. They do not wish... Um, they do not wish my people to have a chance at a better future, so I do not want to give them time to marshal their forces against us. We are few for now, but in time we could be many. I'm going to sort of put a hand on Cameron's shoulder and I say... If he says fate again, I'm going to... I say, <laughs> what, what remain... I, I'm very loquacious, I don't have to use that particular word. What I am, what I'm going to say to you, Cameron, is we, we are at a, what is called a a tipping point. Uh, I, I don't have the exact translation. Crossroads. Indeed. What remains to be seen here, for you, the decision is, do you wish to embrace your destiny or do you seek to push it aside and look to another path? That is the decision that lies before you. As Tirana said, you have reached a crossroad and one lies your destiny with the Covenant of the Flame, the other leads to where I do not know. I do not seek a grand ambition, Glavi, despite your proclamations. I seek only to do what I feel is right with what, what time I have left. D Destiny is often thrust upon those who seek it the least, Cameron. Plus, you, may, you, you do not understand, Glavi, but this, and I sort of gesture at my face, and my familiar will have sort of trotted back by this point, I will not go unnoticed despite what... what what Tyrell suggests of... well, well, I'm not exactly stealth incarnate myself, Cameron. But you don't hear me complaining about it. Cameron, these, all these I can say is that if we do if we do take to this path, you would not walk it alone. Of course. I... Tyrell and Garvira, myself and Garvira if, if, here. If you think this is our best course of action, I, I will um, I will go along with, uh, with both of you because obviously this is we are a three part of a larger whole. I, 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 am not, I don't claim leadership of this. No. Um, I, I, I respect your counsel. I just my concerns are that we must stick to our original prize. But if you believe this is of, of great import, we can go to we, Riff. We, it's not. We are all. Too far. We are all equals in this fellowship. We are comrades at arms. So do not think, Cameron, that it is not for you to say what is in your heart. Mm -hmm. Each of us must speak to what we believe to be the correct course of action. If you believe that is to go to Casquire, then by all means, speak it and let it be known. And, and we will discuss it and we will decide between us which way our fellowship would go. For I would not we see the fellowship need be to broken. Go there. We need to go there. But if you think this takes precedent now... Our ultimate uh, fate lies in Casquire. I mean, I've seen that. Glavia has seen that. Mm. However, mm -hmm. I do strongly feel that this diversion... Although it may cost us time, it may save our lives in the future. Of course, I cannot know that for certain. I do not 
see fate so clearly as Glavier. I only can speak to the living universe itself and hope for an answer, but... I trust your foresight. I just hope the church is not as well informed as they always seem to be. Well, if they are, Cameron, then they can come and what die we need by my is blade. A, what we need is a friend in Raffle. That's what we need. And John, John, I have an idea. And I, want, uh, like, I want to prompt you. Maybe you could do a thing, John. John? John? Uh-huh. Glavia? Yes? Do you, by, do you, by any chance, have any of your old war buddies uh, in the city? Like... You know, any other retired um you know, well i have been a I, I did partake in a number of uh campaigns with the with the host back in my youth i i don't suppose it's inconceivable we need we need a safe place to to investigate i know rayfield has it does have some small collection of dwarfs because yeah, my, my feeling is is even though obviously it's a human city that they would have some dwarven craftsmen there and kind of people who would obviously want to work stone and that kind of thing yeah. classical talking kind of the idea of good stone work good yeah, it, it, it would be like a like a very specific group of some craftsmen outcasts exiles that sort of thing T- to be honest I, i'm thinking with my like nogger abilities maybe there's some like dwarven like brewers there yep yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that, you some, a circle prompt, John. If you yeah, want, to... we we can establish a lot of these things. Yeah, I, I, I could give it a circle roll. I have no like circle abilities whatsoever. I, I, I give just it a love go, the though. idea of meeting one of your war buddies. It's going to be some dwarf like... who's like, yeah, he's a bell end. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as I understand it, um, Riathal is um, a major human city, correct? Yeah, it's it's one of them. The big like there is. Uh, like like we've been like I've been referring to like the hundred kingdoms of humanity. Like right. there's a lot of local lords and lordlings about, mm. but Riathil is one of the bigger sort of successor things that spawned off of the old High Kingdom. Mm. Right. And and the name itself as well is sort of more reminiscent of the old High Kingdom sort of nomenclature than yeah. some of the other ones. Yeah. It's you the will most have, put together one of all. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. it, it does have like even in the mm. name it does have old High Kingdom pedigree. And uh, it is. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed those little, yeah, little yeah. twang, little touch. Yeah. And um, um, it, it's it's a major uh, player in the human sphere, and also it has you know this well enough because you you know Cameron and and he's been talking about his stuff, and um, you did get this sort of opportunity to talk, uh, well, not not talk, but listen to uh, people. Uh, namely Cameron and his former student with this is the session you weren't part of right but, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. but uh Durell was there and you could have listened to uh, them talk so she, she you know, drank the Kool-Aid 100 percent you know that in Riathil like the Riathil is a is a big player and they are like a legit successor kingdom but currently uh not only do they have this apparently prestigious uh, institution of sorcerers and summoners uh, called the Tower of Wisdom. Mm-hmm. Not only do they have that, but the Tower of Wisdom is more, more or less like completely absorbed by the Covenant of the Flame now. And the Covenant of the Flame is the de facto authority in Riathil now. It's, yeah. it's like a theocracy of the Covenant of mm-hmm. the Flame in all but name. Got it. Cameron Got it. has legit reason to be worried so i I guess my question is obviously glarvier is trying to do a circles roll Mm -hmm. but it sounds like this is this would be the kind of place an elven spy would probably be hanging out yeah you you could do your own thing for sure yeah so i mean obviously from my perspective the nearest like to humanity's Mm -hmm. lands is um the is the old country of um my friend uh-huh. Um, my so, issue is I don't want anyone who does know me to know that I'm in the city. So yeah, so I, what I'm <laughs> so what I don't want to I don't want I don't want anyone to recognize me. So can I tap that particular circle? Well, I gotta pull up my. Well, let's let's start with Barbara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be so, quiet for a moment here. Yeah, let, let's start with a roll that's going to fail, and then you can like do your <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can you can take it home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, um, fair enough. Sure. Uh, so Glarvir, let me know. What kind of a dwarf are we thinking about? I'm thinking of because um, g- dwarven ale smiths are like well known because obviously we make the nog and we mm-hmm. make, presumably we make mm-hmm. all manner of other ales. I'm yeah. thinking that 
probably like maybe like a dwarven sort of brewer probably wouldn't be bothered about being slightly eccentric or not as mm-hmm. bothered. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's like a, another brewer I know of, like swap recipes with or whatever, you know, that sort of mm-hmm. like you have a bit of like a, a pro- pal, basically. Yeah, you, you basically have like a bit of a professional sort of a relationship, I suppose. Where, you know, you're both in the same business. You know, you're both sort of doing the same thing. Yeah. I'm on your sheet looking at your stuff. Okay. Okay, cool. Just checking. So while you are indeed skilled in the arts of nog making. Oh yeah, I'm a cycle star. You you you, you were never a nog maker yourself. You you do know how to do it, but by profession you were never one. That's true. So I, I I'm I'm more of like what I think like an enthusiastic amateur. Yeah. Yeah, but, you're but the... I, I'm I'm thinking that maybe like I learned some of this off like a dwarf who was like properly into like the brewing, mm-hmm. and I was maybe thinking of going into that myself, but like my life didn't go that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the appreciation stayed. Uh, the roots still. run deep. Mm-hmm. I just want somewhere where we can lay low for a few days and figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's not like you're strolling in with someone who's like pathologically incapable of lying or not challenging lies and deceit when <laughs> they're seen. <laughs> that city's gonna burn to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it personally. Okay, so, uh, within the, okay, so uh, it's going to be a three. <laughs> Can you spend half there? Can you? Can you yeah, I'm probably going to have to. Yeah, same same rules apply. I'll, I'll dump a couple of the cider into it. Why not? And this is three, by the way, because it is within the same setting. You are a long beard. You will have known brewers. Yeah. Uh, but you were never a brewer yourself. So. Okay. So. Believe in you, John. Put two author into it. I believe. Okay, the Praise Gale. Three. I think I think your circle thing can can get better as well. Oh! Two, two just... sixes as well, if you oh, want. To oh, yeah. do, do you know what? Yeah, I took a cheeky fate into. I've got like sixteen of them. Yeah, you you've got more than. <laughs> enough, so. Jesus, mother of God! I thought I had a lot of ten. Although I've, I'm down to one persona now, so. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm down to three on that myself. Two there more successes. Oh, wow. Yeah, six do successes. A, do you want a yep. suggestion, John? How about the other nog you've been handing out? Yes. Maybe this was a gift from them some time ago, like as a. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. I I I I'd probably had a small tweak of that. Maybe like, this is like when they were teaching me. Maybe this is like the first batch I brewed. Mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. like, like with that. like them like sort that. of helping me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So I think oh, this... so I need to get some more. I've used it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think this this is going to be like a because there's a reason why this brew brewer would be here and not in Mall Brannan making the the brews. So I think maybe there I think, was some skull, but yeah, I think that the reason why they're here is because they are stubborn as shit, <laughs> and they are good at brewing, and they flat out refused to join the guild. Like the Ooh. guild was, you need you're you're brewing, you need to be on the list, Mm-mm. and he was like, please, bitch, I'm too good. To join yeah. the guild, like you, you I'm hold a, your I'm brews. A, I'm a dwarven nugger, suck on these nuts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, I brew my stuff. That's for me. Like you, you, you keep your kill, guild stuff. And then the guild was basically like to the, to the nobles. It's like this guy needs to go. And then suddenly, oh, sorry, you, you need to leave do, now. Do you add your circle people on to, in the rogues tab? Um, you can add that on your. I think it's here. It's in the first character info section, and then you uh, add it down yeah, to the bottom. So, Below relationships, there's a bit that says circles. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. So add that there, and you have uh, it will show up an aptitude for that as well. Mm-hmm. And when you roll enough of that, uh, it turns into a relationship. Oh, nice. And, and then that's, that's even more powerful. So do, do, I, do I start it. off with any aptitude from that roll? Or is yeah, it you, like... you get the one that you, you just did. Okay, so cool. one tick. Hell on. of a roll, John. Hell of a roll. Yeah, really. Yeah. Plum. So, so, so they're actually not doing too bad this evening. So this is like a brushed aside oh. actual brewmaster who's like, well, like I'm like y- you want to control what I do, and I get that, but I'm like sorry, we'll get like I'm I'm gonna do my thing. So right. you do what you do, I, and then dwarven brewmaster on the outs with the guilds. Yep, yeah. and then you can you can name the guy, and uh, 
you'll get if if you name them, uh, you'll get plus one to circles them up further. I will name them as soon as I bought up a suitable dwarven name generator. Mm -hmm. Now, while while this is obviously going on, I think obviously Cameron has a good point. So, um, for me, I think I would I would I would want to lean into the my relationship with Zerval mm -hmm. and her people in Namrata, which would be mm -hmm. the closest elven holding to humanity anyway mm -hmm. um it's uh so uh, i would imagine that her people would want to have someone in the fanatical health mm -hmm. bit of riathal because obviously mm -hmm. you know they're the first ones to get crusaded probably mm -hmm. so um do i have to do a circles roll i don't think so you can like you um let me look at your stuff yeah. here because obviously I'm, I'm still building that relationship so Oh, sorry, you're controlling the area. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I just checked your thing here. So, Having... yeah, so um, you don't have Zerval as a relationship yet. So, no, that's right. I'm saying I'm still building. If you it. wanted to circles her up, yep. you would roll for that. But what I'm hearing is mm -hmm. you want to circles up another one of these Numarta elves uh, in Riafil currently. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like so you, new, you, want to know the, you want to know the spy in Riafil. Got it. Yes, you know, so you can do yeah. that absolutely. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. and if you fail, this person is disfavorable towards you, or they don't exist at all. I guess, right? Um, uh, no, if if you if people fail every single time, rather than having nothing happen, mm -hmm. uh, I will have uh, I will invoke the enmity clause, which is all oh, right. The rule yeah. that says the person exists. But... Some some trouble happens. <laughs> Okay, so and if you have corruption, there's another one like that, but it's um uh, instead of like oh there's some trouble, it's oh you're you're attracting the the weird you know psycho sorcerer murder guys, and they're like yes master. So Cameron's old <laughs> friends basically. Uh -huh, <laughs> yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. So uh, so search roll well, nice. create a spy. Bear with me. I'll just go over to my circles. Um, so, what's the difficulty for that? Oh boy, you don't. You're not a dark elf, so uh, it's. Yeah, However, uh, I do have an infamous reputation for associating with them, so I get a die for that. Yeah. Um, Would you get an advantage because he knows one of the people of the, of no. the group of them? Well, because no. I have this relate no. reputation, that's why I was trying to say that. <laughs> yeah. No. No, Matthew. All dark elves don't know each other, Matthew. No, not all Ooh. of them. But I meant like Ooh. these. If these are like. Spies, there might no, be. This probably person would know. I could probably name drop her when I get there. But yeah, like, yeah, that's 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 a real thing. You, you could yeah. be like, oh yeah, uh, we I'm know. Buddies with Zerol. So, I'm her. I'm her guy on the other yeah. side of the river. I'm on her. I'm her guy on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so, like the one elf that talks to you people. Yeah. So what do you mean, you people? Elf. Yeah, um, yeah, you know what I mean by you people. <laughs> In that case, they will know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna say this is. Like it's gonna have to be specific occupation, okay. And that's gonna put it at a four. Okay, that's fine. Uh, can I get a bonus for that infamous reputation? The reputation, because you're because I know dark elves and I associate with them. Ah. Yeah, the the thing is, yeah, I'm gonna have to look up specifically if I'm there's anything here. extra <laughs> on the yeah. And yeah. you're right to do so. Like that's the intent here. Uh, Okay, doing a quick check. In a word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess we could apply it here. Yep. I mean, hell, you're going to use it against me eventually. I got to, I guess, got to yeah. come into play yeah, on my the, side sometime, right? Yeah, the <laughs> infamous thing is kind of like uh, it applies in in all situations, positive and negative. So, right, exactly. I was yeah. going to say, like, so, it's, like it's, it's, when I go back home and try to do this kind of stuff, yeah, it, then, then be like, like people oh, are going to be like, difficulty, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, boss. Like, I know the kind of people you hang out with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, I guess, but you know, you're also a lunatic. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I've heard you like to murder people with dark elves, but no, that's not true. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's not what the rumors say. Yeah, I mean, but that's what oh, I heard. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's just do it. Oof. Oh, but I do get a six. You do get a six. So if you roll a couple uh, more successes, you're this to work. So you're home free. All right, let's 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 try it. One. So I'll, let's do one. Come on, baby, big money, big money, big money. Yes. Okay, one more and success. Yeah. Oh, you, you got one, but it's unfortunately it wasn't a six, uh, so we're man. one off. Yep. Almost uh, there. And I can't, I can't retroactively throw it. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, no. Well, like we're done with this one, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. you can mark your uh, one uh, persona and one fate for your circles, though. Oh yeah, I will. Yeah. Um. Right. Okay. So, who is this? Do you want to name them? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll name them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just generating that. Yeah. Um. So you can put that there, and there will be consequences once we go looking. Yeah, I'm sure she, yeah. she, she, the, 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 the spying question will probably be yeah. a little harder to, you know, smooch. So basically what we've just done is we've established these NPCs. However, mm-hmm. we will like the we've rolled this now, but the action is going to happen once we go to Riathil mm-hmm. of you guys actually contacting these people. Like that's going to be done then, but we've rolled this in advance. But we'll deal with the sort of actual action once we get there. But you're you're sort of thinking like, who do I know? Mm, yeah, and, racking uh, our brains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. We've established John Drill and Dark Elf Spy. I'll have a name in a minute. I'm just Murderina Darkblade. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we we're all stood in the very scenic location of this ancient withered elven forest, this stained reflecting pool. We're all thinking about the crossroads that we find ourselves in. What do we do? Which, which way do we head? What is the, what is the call? And I think it's down to Cameron because everyone's sort of been pointing out the options and then saying, Cameron, <laughs> like it's like, uh, she was your destiny. He is very conflicted in this because, you know, the first time, possibly in generations, we have an idea where an act- the actual crown may be, um, mm-hmm. and it's something that desperately needs to be found and put to good use and not allowed to fall into the hands of, you know, the, the, uh, the church. But at the same time, being here and seeing sort of what they're doing to Tyrell's history and you know like the church's involvement leaves him very disquiet and he wants to know more but does he pull at that thread Mm. this is a good point matthew i will point out you play this out and this is when we do the mold breaker thing Mm because you have you have a clear crossroad on your sheet Mm -hmm. so you you break one of those uh, appropriately now and so this is a belief yep you have a belief that says yeah. you want to learn about the church, right? Yeah. And you have one that's about the tracking down the crown, getting to yeah. Cascarad. So that's your crossroad. You break one of them, pursue the other. Mm. And making this very explicit because we're you know, trying to get to grips with this stuff. And, and we've never used mold yeah. breaker. Yeah. I've never yeah. had a mold breaker. Yeah. Yeah. And so. this, is, this is the like textbook example right here <laughs> literally two roads to go down so two roads. You, you you are comfortable leaving this up to me and to the other two you want me to be the one that i mean they've indicated i think uh Larver and terrell both have basically said these are the options this is what i think cameron we want to reach an accord yeah because at Do least we, Larver... have we can stay that there's somewhere safe in wrath do we have somewhere we could go i may know someone Although, yes, there, there there may be a there may be a couple of uh, dwarves that I can uh, that I can prevail upon for some brief hospitality. Uh, also, I won't know for definite until we get there. I mean, obviously, of people course. move around, times change, and whatnot. Indeed. Yeah, this is this is not an easy way. I should not I should not move in fear. 
the thing we understand is when I your life is both, too short, Cameron, to live in fear. It's mm-hmm. getting shorter by the day. Um, what you need to both need to understand though is, in when I was at the tower, something something happened. Um, you don't need you don't really need to understand what happened, but let's just say I had to I had to swiftly vacate my teaching position. Mm-hmm. As you say this, mm-hmm. you as as you're explaining, right? You're sort of. I'm going to be circumspect. We're not going to dwell on this. I'll just mention this and we'll move on. <laughs> um, you'll, you catch a glimpse of like, oh, it's yeah, the reflecting pool. Oh, it's, it's showing oh, the stars. No, no, not, it's, not it's, 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 it's not the stars. It's not the stars. It's, it's you looking at you from the reflecting pool. You're not at the edge, though. So yeah, it shouldn't yeah. do that. It's looking at but, me. But at, as you talk about this incident, which you're sort of... <laughs> dancing around uh you see yourself looking at you from the reflecting pool come, come on no no is... no okay no. Come, there's, come there's, on, it's cameron. a matte black come on cameron out with it let us have no yeah, yeah, secrets okay, between okay. the i'm staring at them um... elvin that looks so weird sometimes um <laughs> look if we go there you we, we say it's very important you need to understand this if we go there you may meet another me and I don't know what that's going to be like. Okay. You hear. No one else I, does. They hear. Yeah, you, you hear. And. What do you mean, another you? Look. Are you referring mistakes. to some sort of... make mistakes. Have you, have you got a twin? Or you got a twin or something? Rot of sorcery or. Um, I. Look, it's, it's, I, made, I messed up. I summoned something I shouldn't. It, it wasn't meant to happen. But it did. Fate be damned, Bavia. Now it wears your face. Now it is me. It, it, it is, it's taken over my position at the school. Mm. I had to get out of there. It, I got something in return. Something that could help everyone one day. But it's there. If I go there, we could run into me. It may know that I'm there. I don't know. It, it may be fine. It may nothing. Look, it may be. Just you may just be teaching and having a great time, and making the students of now the, of the Covenant of the Flame great summoners. It may, it may be fine, but if we go there, and I run into me, and, and I kind of glance back at the pool at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're staring at you. Yeah, yeah. On the bright may not take... on the bright side, Cameron. If if as far as the people in Raphael are concerned, you've been walking around the city doing your business like non-stop then seeing you walking around the city shouldn't be a surprise for anybody well i don't know what's been happening so i could i don't know what situation i'm walking into so i want to know well, be discreet. we have some... and, uh, i don't intend but i want, the fireworks to, I want start you to know this this is important for you to know yes because you may run into me that's not a me you understand does it look exactly as you are with the yes. eyes and, and the familiar and don't know if it has the familiar. But presumably, though, if we bumped into this other you, it would not know us because presumably it doesn't have all of your knowledge and memories. Up to a point, I imagine that's true. Perhaps and we it's... should create some sort of hmm, uh, code word. It's highly intelligent, crafty, and cunning. I, 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 I just, I don't want to go anywhere near it. Not at this stage. I, we have, I have more important things to deal with than my own mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm looking at the pool. I was—I mm. could feel it laughing at me. I got—I got something out of the deal. It, it wasn't great, but I'm going to make the best of it. I want you guys to know: if we go there, that is a possibility. But I do—I think that you are right. The words you said ring true. That we need to know what the church is doing, and I can't ignore this because they're an act. Clearly, they're—they're—they're they're, they're not passive. They're acting. They're doing something. They're. They're yeah. attempting to conquer the world. Yes, this is the modus operandi. Well, conquer is the, is the right word. Maybe bring bring about a certain. I would use conquer. A change, maybe in their eyes, a change for the better. From your perspective, you have never been on the other side of their blades. I have, and I can tell you, I know their intentions as well as any one. And a, a large uh, organization probably. taking over a people is pretty mm-hmm. much the textbook definition of conquering. Yes, but in addition, now that the church has essentially absorbed the school, the, that version of me, whoever, whatever they're doing, is is now working for the church. By potentially, he could be high up in it. Who knows? He could yeah. potentially have helped 
fosters this change for his own nefarious purposes. Uh, You're being quite vague as to the nature of this spirit or being. I do not want to name the thing. Is it a being of flesh or? It is in flesh now. It it wears his face. I I, I do not know its exact nature. And I don't want to try to describe it in case it draws its attention towards us, especially Ah. in our current position. I understand. Well, yeah, so Cameron, if we if we are to go to Raphael, at least you will not be alone and you will not be unprotected. And, Indeed. and, and, and we should we should him. make sure that you are never out of our sight and we will not be hoodwinked by this go. doppelganger or whatever it is. Exactly. So we Perhaps a safe him. word. You know, something to... Hmm. We use them at home sometimes in... Um, hmm. I do not know its intention. Shall we say intimate moments? Our initial conversation, so I... We need to be wary. But I agree with you. I think we should go to Raphael. I feel that getting more information it may benefit us in the long run. As far as we know, the crown isn't going anywhere. It hasn't gone anywhere for hundreds, if not thousands of years. So. And I would really like the chance to to bolster or at least check in with the Dark Watchers. We need their help in this. We cannot do this all ourselves. You could report back to them, I do believe. But if we have a safe place to... to to investigate from in Raphael, because mm. any contact I have there comes with strings attached. That well, we shall we shall return to this encampment. We shall make a barter a deal with these scavengers. We shall go to Raphael with them as prospectors, scavengers ourselves. No one will know that we're anything other than money grubbing thieves destroying another if, if, civilization's if an culture. Elf. If they do have an elven relic, how how would we just how would we stop it? How could we destroy it? Well, I intend to take them. If if we I, can. I, I was going to say, I, I was assuming that Terrell would take it since it's rightfully they obviously are evil. ours, and they should return home. And if we can perhaps make use of them to hmm, not to put too fine a point on it, save the world. Then the elves who once dwelt here would rest more peacefully. How, how much do you know about elven magic? <laughs> I mean, we are, we are what we are. No, mm. I did. Uh, yes, I understand that you are literally it's, magic. It's, but mm, yes. how much do you know about how it functions in practice against your own people? Well, I mean, it, it, you're, you're, you're thinking I, in terms I can of only, your... I can only describe it in academic terms. You're, you're thinking in terms of your forced sorceries where you, mm, shall we say, so, so force your will upon the universe. So we, for example... Exists as a part of the universe. Yes. yes. It flows through us, and we touch it with our Desc- voices. Described it, that it's always in music. That oh, and... mostly, yes. Yeah. So if, if, if say, if say a human had the right kind of elven. The objects, the objects we we craft with our power. Uh, hmm. Again, my I'm question, my not question, an expert on the crafting. I, I am question is, on... is, is this possible, Errol? Mm. If, if a human had the right object in mm. you, from your people's like um, craftsmanship and they knew the right song and they sung it in the right way, could they, they influence you? They wouldn't have to sing. Oh, well, well, yeah, I'll say... The song they... is in the object, so therefore the object has been conveyed the abilities of whatever song. All they have to know is how to... Mm, Conjure it up, call it okay. for so if, if say that was possible, could they, in effect, create a similar sense of control as we saw in the north? No, no, no. The objects itself would have to be crafted to that purpose, and mm, there are very few exist. powers that operate in such a fashion. It, it, okay. Again, you're thinking in terms of your forcing wills upon the universe mm-hmm. as you humans do. It's different for us. Um, I understand that my understanding may be somewhat... It's, um, I, I do not begrudge you your arguments in this, in this case. It's not something we choose to talk to out with outsiders very often. Let's just say that though, that the objects themselves are things of power and mm-hmm. they would give any human being a massive advantage over any other human being. It would be problematic to meet our own artifice in battle. 
Because my studio not, was... not not that we haven't had to do that in the past, but you know, we have had our problems was... ourselves. But yes, I mean, you you obviously you were not you were listening in when we were talking to my student back up in the north. Mm. They were awfully confident in their ability. <sighs> well, it, it, we, we put it down. We and Clavio put it down to mainly foolishness. But what if they have something of your of your people that helps them? That is my concern. And any items. Yeah. Even uh, even if they are simply the simplest of mm. encircled objects, yeah. they belong to us, and they should not Indeed. be in the hands of the Covenant. Um, much as I recovered the the open hand axe, which is of my people, I would expect Terrell to expend similar efforts to recover anything of his people that has been taken. And I do so enjoy denying the Covenant the fruits of their labors. <laughs> I, I do want it's to becoming something of a hobby of mine. How how have they gotten so powerful? In the that I cannot answer. You must be careful. But then yes, we'll go to Riffel, but we will not linger there too long. Only yes. so long as for us to find this reliquary. I, I presume that oh, oh, I, I, I have to. I have are. to admit, uh, I have expended almost all of my uh, all of my dwarven ale to a. Uh, to win us the friendship of these people, I, I wouldn't frankly, mind. We are low on supplies. I wouldn't mind the time to get a few extra supplies, maybe a, mm. maybe Understood. replenish my stock after all the journey. Once we've finished that, the journey to Cascarad is still along, and as you say, Terrell, very perilous. Indeed. So we agreed then. To we are agreed. But it is Same a short again. diversion. We cannot engage ourselves in a protracted conflict. I do not as, intend as to uh, no put down roots. Mr. The terrain Edwin. favors the church in Raffle. Mm. Me too. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Home. I, I, I'm sorry, Cameron. It sounded like there you were suggesting that I would not be in favor of a, of a conflict with the church. What I, my suggestion was, it does not favor us. Battle does not favor us in, in this. I don't mind thumping some of those flame-tending dunderheads around a bit. I wouldn't mind adding a few more notches to my own belt, so to speak. Well, I'm not a swordsman, but I, I prefer. I would prefer to. In no yes, yes, yes. Infiltration is our goal. Oh. <laughs> a lot of people are going to die. In this quest. Yeah. Well, we'll master. You have it. This is. This is now. It's only covenant of the flame, people. If it makes you feel any better. Still people. Wow. We we know they have at least some. Sorcerers, I think that's the correct term, off power. So it does, even though I am not a fan of her, of deceit or anything like that, it does, it does behoove us to at least choose our targets wisely. Indeed. But yes, to Rathiel, as you say, we will, we will head back with these this archaeological dig. The thieves, the thieves. You mean yes, yes. yes. Luckily, we need them now, or else I'd slip their throats while they slept. <clears throat> I digress. Not a very honourable way to to settle a grievance with someone, to rally, if you don't mind me saying. Mm. Glavia, um, there is nothing more honourable than victory. Well, yes, there is. Honour. <laughs> and that is what honour is. I'm, I'm going to start edging my way back towards the camp here. It's about to turn into a... <laughs> it's going to be an honour off. <laughs> also, like, they can't see... I'm guessing they can't see my reflection in the no, pool, but I can. No, and it's no. still there. Just turn around yeah, and, like, doppelganger Cameron's there, like... <laughs> <laughs> As you return to um, the old camp, um, Ostor welcomes you back. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, we forgot uh, about that guy. Yeah, the steward who was uh, sitting with these guys. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh. have you finished your secret conclave then? Well, it wasn't very secret. We were just deciding oh, on our next not move. Inviting you over, but uh, we had some things to discuss. It's, it's, I, I fully understand. Indeed, I our, the idea. our current plan is to, since these these kind fellows here have uh, invited us to a. Uh, share in their endeavors is to mm -hmm. travel back to Raphael with them there we may resupply you may get to enjoy a little of a a more civilized environment and then we will continue some of the journey. grand age it works that may and still be present after before you 
perhaps become concerned that we are hmm, taking a diversion against your own purpose. Mm -hmm. We have knowledge of some individuals in Riathal who may be able to perhaps assist you in making further inroads with the great dwarven people of and, and um, they, I always forget the name of your your, your city, Glavia. <laughs> and, indeed, Ostor. And uh, look at it this way: you've been you've been sent by uh, your lord to further ties of friendship between the dwarves Mal and the Brandon, humans. That was Mal, it. Mal, yes, Mal Brandon's correct. And uh, look upon this endeavor, which sees humans and dwarves working together, as a small test run, perhaps. Before we actually reach the the great dwarven fortress of Kaskarad. Hmm. A dry run, so to speak. Yes, quite. Uh, though it does seem rather wet, and he looks at the dwarves knocking back the nog. <laughs> well, I... you all, all best learn how to take your nog. All negotiations, you uh, with dwarves. <laughs> all negotiations need a certain amount of lubrication. And I'll, I'll offer him like the tiny last little sip of my uh, my nog. Uh, he holds up a hand and says, "Oh, oh no, I've I've been down that road." Pass it uh, here, Glavier. Oh, so, uh, you intend to there you go. pursue some secret purpose in Riathil? You, you are That's now fine. you are now insta drunk. Since even, I take it, it slightly it, better than the humans. But it, even a feel... sip gets all non-dwarves insta drunk. Yeah. I He's just going to sing it off. It's be fine. Yeah. It's like plus one. Dance in the forest. It's like plus one obstacle for like social interactions or something. It's going to go full karaoke. Or plus, any or plus second. one uh, advantage if you're putting on your perspective. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> Aster, Aster, uh, mm. secret purpose. Yes. Nah. Which is fine. I am familiar with secret purposes. However, I. Hmm. I wonder if we are diverting from our purpose, even though you've mentioned certain worthy goals that might be achieved along the way. Are we losing focus? No. This is not me uh, indicating anything. This is me. No, asking. no, no. We we are not losing focus. We we have gained certain additional information about the trip to Cascarat, hmm. and we believe it is necessary for us to resupply and mm -hmm. investigate certain matters that may have a bearing on that journey. Mm -hmm. Forewarned is forearmed. My focus never wavers, Aster. Be assured mm -hmm. of that. And I have a great desire to see the, the lost hold of my people. So I have no fear on that. And it is my belief, and as I have I've sworn to your Lord Beric, I will endeavour to aid in any way that I can in Reforging the ties between our two peoples. I want to go there as prepared as we can. And we, unlike some, keep our word. Hmm. Woe to those who don't, then. Indeed. Indeed. Shall we enjoy this delightful forest creature and lay down for a delightful night of rest? Sounds like a splendid idea, Austin. Oh, man, he, he's, he's, he's like the forced. He's, <laughs> he, he's having such a bad time. <laughs> We're well then. He, he, he does like a little jig and says, dance, like, just dig in. And, you know, um, goes for a piss, I guess, <laughs> in the distance. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to keep half an eye on him just because like, if he's going in the distance I don't want mm -hmm. someone to come out of the forest and nab him yeah. I, I want to I, wanna, yeah, I, 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 like, I mean I have elven eyes so mm -hmm. and these ears don't lie so Cameron can you send your finger to keep mm -hmm. an eye on him it's not a thing it's, a, it's my friend but I can yes just send your, your little fox off to watch him please I just kind of look at him just go and gesture just to... And I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open mm -hmm. as well until he yeah. gets back. Yeah. Don't, no, let, he, him, he, don't let him he... bathe in the pool. It will not end well for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, no, please do. Do let he, him. He goes up to a tree, does his business, you know, starts heading back. No mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. yeah, and I think we just... Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll spend the night 
get chatting with the dwarves and the humans, getting mm-hmm. to know them all. So basically saying, yeah, we're up for helping him with your endeavor. We're quite happy to travel with you to the city. Mm-hmm. Happy days. And we're settling yeah. for a night of drinking, eating, and hopefully yeah, sleeping. I'll, I'll ask a few like general questions. Like, have they been prospecting at other like sites around the area? Is this their main one? Like, this is this is their main one. They've spent several seasons here. How did they so, find uh, this place? Like, how did they even know it was here? Like, was there something just obviously sticking on the ground that drew their attention? Yeah, the the pool was a dead giveaway. Right. Okay. Uh, so the pool's um, always been around. They, they didn't. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm also going to suggest to my two comrades that when like watches or whatever are kept during the night mm-hmm. that we make sure that like one of us is awake for each of the watches. Oh, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, uh, I fully intend on keeping it close watch. I have too many, too many people that might want to, uh, you know. I think yeah. you can trust oh, Lord Beric's man to. to like, take obviously, watch as well, we're all we're all going to need sleep at some point of of varying amounts, but yeah, we we'll do. We'll do a watch rotation between the three of us, so that one of us is always awake. I mean, I probably need the least, so... So fast, so traditional uh, Tolkien adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> set of Indeed. Watch. Yeah, set of watch, roll for random encounters. That's, oh, God. That's, that's how he created the, the famous works. Um, no, so you, you spend your night... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're running through three trolls in the forest. Um, true story. So you spend your nights with the excavation crew. You chat, you talk. They, they seem like they are sort of... Well, they're sort of like, yeah, we've been doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, we, we bumped into, into enough of each other, you know, pulled a group together. We've been around, so we, we started taking shots at different places. And, you know, once we happened upon the pool, they've, they've spent, when they say, like, we've spent a couple seasons here, they mean years. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So season for them is when the snow smelt and when the snows start. Bring yeah. Yeah. Come here and then yeah. work. So uh, they spent a couple years here digging around. So this is not the only stretch of land. They've been through the forests. Yeah. As they... actually... oh, oh, sorry, Matthew. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just curious. Obviously, I don't want to assume, that, you know, that you know this is like everyone owns part of the world. But does someone actually own this land? Does this like belong to like a lord or no? Is, no, this, part this, of the this is just no. This, this is what land. you would like. Pick your name. Uh, these guys call it the wildlands. Wildlands, yeah. Okay. So basically, this this is a stretch of wild land between the mountains, which are partially, you know, sort of controlled, quote unquote, by the dwarves. But a lot of that is not in the sort of dwarven heartland as well. And then to the other side in the distance are the hundred kingdoms of humanity. While the um while the chatting's going on during the night, um I, I basically want to I suppose sort of try and like talk up Lord Beric and you mm-hmm. know how he's trying to like reforge hopefully with Austin's help if he can get off his arse. Um talk up the fact that you know he's trying to like build closer ties between dwarves and humans because obviously these these guys are pretty sort of like mercenary in their outlook they're all in it for the silver uh-huh. and they're, they're quite willing to work with humans these dwarves they, they're working together well so I'm sort of trying to imply as I'm chatting to him you know aided by the drink and like my, my dwarven reputation and whatnot um, trying to talk up the fact that you know like if you get in with like Lord Beric He's trying to push the whole like dwarves and humans like forward as one. It might go well for you in the future because he's on the up. So mm. you might want to hitch your wagon to that train. Yeah, that does sound like a persuade roll. Yeah, boy. Try and I, and I would like to. I would like to do it with lots of slapping on backs and uh, <laughs> drunken <laughs> chattery. Mm-hmm. Is this so, you using your folksy wisdom or whatever? No, this is me trying to coarsely persuade them. Yeah, that's that's oh, right. personally okay. something you could do because that's that's something. the sort of like rough charm. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Sort of like, yeah, Lord Beric's a great bloke. Ah. <laughs> Which... Yeah, and he, Lord Beric, straight up just downs a knock, like he. Yeah, like I'll, I'll, does, be, I'll be like, I'll be like, you fucking... know, he, you know, he's a human you can trust because he can like, handle dwarven ale. How many humans can handle dwarven ale? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, not a lot. Like that's that's certainly a skill. Okay, so we well, put all of his experience points into right. Yeah, so yeah. I've, I've got plus one rep amongst dwarves. 
Uh, Let's see. What do we have here? For my, for my Virga. Right. Uh, yeah, so you are known as a Dwargar. Um, I guess that would... Yeah, yeah. None of these guys are uh, Dwergar themselves, so... I think they would put stock in that, even if they don't, you know, like they're, you're, you're selling them on a very different idea, but you know, you are, uh, like a, like an elder Dwargar, so. Indeed. Uh, da, 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 da. So course persuasion. So one from my Dwergar. Uh, what's the, what sort of difficulty we're looking at? Um, we're looking at a three. Do you, do you know what? I'm going to put my last persona into it. Why not? He's mm -hmm. gone. He's gone all in. Yep. Look at that. Two sixes. And I'm spanking a fate point into it. Boom, boom. Yep. Oh, three. Uh, four. four sorry. So... Yeah, like you're 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 talking to them, and like you, you pick up very quickly on what these guys are about. Like these the dwarves here, you know they're they're exiles and outcasts. Like they're they're not in Moldbrannan. They're you know scratching up some artifacts from the ground. They're not doing guild work. They're not out here doing the the noble houses work. They're out here for themselves really. And um, like uh, some of them don't really have like a proper beard as such. Like they they are they've drifted. Uh, from, you know, the sort of very traditional, if you come from, as you do, from the noble circles of Mulbrannan, a uh, very different kind of deal. Like, they lead vastly different lives to yourself, but you do share that, the idea of not really fitting in. And these guys are out for themselves. Uh, they want to prosper. And you pick up on that very quick. You share the nog. You share the back slabs, the laughs, the dwarven songs. Uh, about mostly drinking and goat cheese, I think. Probably slipping and, uh, a few verses about Misty Mountains, you know, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we um, we um reminisce about the glory of the glittering caves. And uh, uh, I'll also try and drop in, um, just to like reinforce the whole like humans and um, mm. dwarves working together. At some point, I'll like get out the, the open hand axe which mm -hmm. I forgot I should have got an additional bonus for because I shook hands mm -hmm. with everybody, but I forgot about that. Yeah. Mind. Yep. But um, I'll get that out and I'll be like telling a bit of like the history, like we found out about mm -hmm. it, you know, about the first amongst dwarves, you know, like joining mm -hmm. hands with the humans and whatever, mm -hmm. just to like reinforce that whole, like, yeah. oh, you know, look, it's not a new idea. Humans and dwarves are working together. We mm -hmm. used to do it back in the old days. And let's face it, us dwarves, we love our traditions. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to make it sound less like, hey, here's a revolutionary new idea yeah. we should go for. Mm -hmm. More like, mm -hmm. this is us returning to a traditional way that's led to us yeah. prospering in the past. Yeah. We should be doing more of this. Yeah. So, yeah, you find it, eventually, you do find it a rather easy sell. Basically, what they accept and take away from your your evening with them is like, sign up with you know Lord Beric when, when you know, the time comes, like, you're already doing this stuff and like it's not like he's against you turning a coin so like you you already like get along like you, you don't have anything uh, that um you would change like you, you just like yeah, get but, on but board with what have you got to lose yeah yeah and uh yeah it's it's a very easy sell cuz you know what these guys want they want to prosper they want a future for themselves they want the silver and um you know there's there's more of that if we you know establish trade and all that stuff like they're they're on board like you, you just like basically they say uh by the like you do your takeaway is show us where and when this thing is gonna kick off you know we'll we'll be there yep. with our with our shovels and picks and whatnot um uh, yeah in the meantime we'll continue robbing elven treats <laughs> See, I'm also like low key, like thinking, like, oh, if I get him to team up with Lord Barrick and he gets them doing like other stuff, maybe they'll do a bit less robbing elven trinkets. So that might keep mm -hmm. uh, Tyrael a bit happy, you know, if they sign on with Barrick and they're doing other stuff. Yeah. 
So we know that this is something that we can, you know, pick up when, you know, things start moving. Um, right. Okay, cool. So we spend the evening. There's a, there's a lot of talking, a lot of, you know, drunken, you know, laughing. I, I will mention, to, if I don't mean to interrupt, I will mm. mention to Glavia as he sort of, after he sort of, the period after he's kind of convinced them about, you know, joining up with Beric and kind of things are settling down. I just mentioned to him, I, I did spend, I did spend several years in Rathfil at, at the tower. Oh. Teaching. Uh, um, so I, I know some of the, I know of some of the dwarfs that reside there, not on a personal level, mostly mainly outcasts and, um, well, I, I seem to, to recall there was a, the, there was a dwarven brewmaster by the name of a, John Drella. I think I heard he was in the area. I don't know whether he's still there or not, but uh, we, we, we were close once upon a time. Uh, I might be able to prevail on him for some hospitality. Like I say, assuming he's still there. That would be that would be more fortuitous. But I, but what I was I was thinking, I mean, just hearing your tale, is perhaps you could try and give those dwarves a, a chance at a better lot with Beric for a and to fend for scraps in the city. Maybe. Well, yes, that, that's what I've just been saying to them that. Uh, they should hitch their wagon to uh, yeah. Lord Beric. So no, but meaning while you're in the city, maybe see if you can convince him more. While we're well, there. Well, yes, quite. I I don't want to be um, I don't want to be treading on um Oster's toes too much though. I, obviously, I'm here to help, but uh, mm. he 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 is taking the lead in in representing Lord Beric in reforging these bonds between the the Mountain King and the humans. Something to think about. As far as I'm aware, there is no brew brewmaster in in Beric's lands. Perhaps well, he was. Uh, uh, John Drill's not uh, not strictly officially a brewmaster. You have to be tied up with guilds and paperwork and all of that sort of stuff. He's very accomplished, but he was he was never of the you know signing the pay, signing on the dotted line, uh, d doing guild business sort of fellow. A bit, bit of an oddball, you might say, but. Uh, Good, a good, sure. good, good start, fellow. Good start, fellow. I'm sure he is. Perhaps he has some apprentices that you could convince to make the make the jump. Aye, who knows? Perhaps. Who knows? Perhaps I can, as you said. Perhaps I, can, assuming John Drill is still there. Perhaps I can sell him on the idea of uh, that he might turn a tidy profit, knowing that Lord Beric has an appreciation of the finer finery of dwarven ale. Perhaps he might be able to turn more of a profit if he were to become the brewmaster to Lord Beric, rather than scrabbling around for guild scraps in the city. That's a damn fine idea, Cameron. Damn fine. Just it just came to me. Your words moved me, Lavia. Yeah, I well, didn't understand half of them. It, the, the, the 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 beating of chests and and backs seems painful, but I, the words, yes, I. No, no. It's just it's just our way. Painful. Uh, forge, forging, forging comradeship and uh, appreciating each other's company in the, in the the true dwarven fashion. Obviously, as you know, uh, I'm very, I'm a very strong believer in the ideals of my people, and not all of our ideals are to do with mining or crafting, although many are. But we also enjoy each other's company, much as you humans do. We, we like to socialize with each other. We like to reinforce bonds of friendship between ourselves. We may do it differently, but as I, as I hope we're all realizing as we, as we forge this fellowship and we're meeting all these different people, that even though there are many, many differences between the forest kin, the mountain folk and yourselves, there are also many similarities. We may express ourselves differently, but we all appreciate our own kind. We all appreciate friendship, a good fire, hospitality. Perhaps there are more things that bring us together than there are that push us apart. Well and said. that gives me hope for the future. Well said. We all enjoy a good meal. Aye. And a good drink! <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm, I'm good on that. But thank you. And I will sleep. Yeah, and I think we're all set to um, start with the sort of ending montage of breaking down the camp, picking up the pieces, 
and heading towards the west, the hundred kingdoms of humanity, and towards Riathil, where the baleful tower of the Covenant of the First Flame resides. And apparently an evil duplicate of Cameron that we didn't know about as well. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> I, I, I did like the way Cameron was like, um, guys, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but... Uh... <laughs> I didn't expect it to come up for quite a while because we weren't, we weren't originally going to go to Rearfield mm -hmm. for quite some time. Mm -hmm. That's how destiny works, man. Yeah. Works in, uh, you know, unknown ways. So... Yeah, that's that. So we, we end with the whole crew heading in a sort of caravan uh, towards Riathil. Excellent. Thank you very much for running it. Very much enjoyed yep. it. Thank, Thank you. you very much for... Uh, yeah, that, that was a lot of yeah. socializing and a lot of, you know, feeling about a little bit, the, the history spelunking and all that stuff. And also, um, this was a turn that I did not anticipate, really. <laughs> like we, Me neither. We, I think yeah. we got some solid stuff down in there, dice rolls yeah. included, so... yeah. No, that was good. That was good. Excellent. Well, obviously we'll sort out uh, Arthur and whatever, but yep. I shall stop the stream here.